Hey, yesterday we saw in Zechariah 2, verses 1 to 5, that God is going to make Jerusalem prosperous again. It's going to be overflowing with people. But today, let's look at verses 6 to 9 and see what God's plans are. And there's a bunch of people who, very strangely, haven't come back from Babylon. They're just kind of hanging out in Babylon, and they seem to be satisfied with it. Let's read verses 6 to 9. Up, up, flee from the land of the north, says the Lord, for I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven, says the Lord. Up, Zion, escape you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them and they shall become spoil for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. We often get this idea that God does everything and we do nothing. But go back and think about it all through the Bible. You'll find that that might not be such a good idea. Remember, for example, the Exodus. When God delivered his people from slavery and bondage in Egypt, uh, he delivered them. He set up the thing. But you know what? They still had to walk out. They still had to separate themselves physically from Egypt. So when God's people go to Babylon, uh, guess what? They've still got to walk out. They've still got to actually separate themselves from the inf Babylon, the influences of Babylon. There's a lot of activity that we're supposed to be engaged in. God doesn't just, uh, you know, Noah, he didn't just say, okay, check this out. Here's an instant ark. No, Noah worked on that thing for about 100 years, you know. That's a lot of Home Depot runs. Moving's a pretty difficult thing. And here these people are being asked to move from Babylon back to Jerusalem. Uh, you know, in your best situation, moving is a pretty difficult thing. You've got to, all of your relationships are established there locally. Your, everything is worked out locally. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit something to move. There's a lot of uncertainties ahead about where you think you're going. In one of these commentaries uh, I read, uh, Joyce Baldwin puts it really succinctly, quote, they were, they were to escape not so much from political restrictions as from the danger of becoming too comfortably integrated in the economic life of the countries of their adoption. We have a lot of the same problem today. We're very tightly integrated where we are. Some of us would find it pretty difficult to leave the full system, the media narrative, the government narrative, the way the corporations, the way it all is laid out and the way it's all working today. That's a pretty interesting thing when you look at the last scenario back there in Revelation 18, not our study today, but where the kings of the earth, Babylon, and the merchants of the earth, they've kind of got everything under their thumb back there at the end, right before God destroys Babylon. People will be so tightly integrated that when you come to the mark of the beast in Revelation 13, it'll be too inconvenient not to receive it. These people that are in Babylon, it's very convenient to stay there, right there in Babylon. And God is calling them out for their own good. And he's calling us out from Babylon today for our own good. Hey, look how we all did in the global crisis in 2020. You might remember that. Basically all of us, and I mean including the Christians, virtually all of us utterly failed. Our freedoms were taken away and we stood there like sheep and we just allowed it to happen. And so that's a warning, a big warning for us today. That's why this section on Zechariah 2 verses 6 to 9 is, is so important. This is a warning to get out, get out while you still can. Get out from spiritual Babylon. Get out from all those things that have your attention, all the static and nonsense of the world, and come to the Lord Jesus. So what do we do about it? Well, Zechariah is giving them an interesting opportunity here. He's showing them that, that ultimately Babylon is destroyed. Ultimately, Babylon is plundered. The, the thing to do is right now, by faith, to step out, to get out of Babylon, to go away from all the things that take us away from God's truth. And so that's what, that's what the people were called to do in Zechariah's day, and that's what we're called to do in our day as well. We want to apply this for ourselves. So Zechariah is saying Babylon's collapse is going to come. God is going to destroy Babylon. And so what do we do? Well, now's the time to step out. Now's the time to believe by faith and, and to evacuate before the end comes. And we need to step out from all the twisted things of the world before the end comes. And will we make the same mistake that many did in Zechariah's day, who just kind of stayed in there and died in Babylon? What about us? What about us? See you tomorrow morning, and we'll look at verses 10 to 13.